Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to the channel. So what I've done, uh, because I didn't really want to mess with things on my main PC right now, where I have Vodacera 39 installed, I thought, well, I just need another, you know, x86-64 capable PC. And I didn't really want to move things around and hook another one up, so I thought, what's the easiest option? I'll hook up my Steam Deck. So right now, I've got my Steam Deck. Uh, I just flashed Vodacera 39 uh, to an SD card, and I've booted the Steam Deck from that. And I've transferred some files, and I've kind of already gone through the steps I'm about to show you. But other than that, it was basically a clean installation of Botticera. So in Botticera version 39, uh, I've noticed that the Lib Retro Core for Citra is missing. Now, I don't fault the Botticera devs for taking this out. Uh, I think we all know that the LibRetro Core for Citra was never really that well maintained. Uh, it always performed a little worse, sometimes a lot worse, than the standalone Citra. And in version 39, standalone Citra is still included. And it's the only option for 3DS emulation that is included in this version of Botticera. Uh, but again, I don't I don't fault the Botticera team for this. The decision to remove it makes sense. Um, I just like having the option of having the Lib Retro Core there because pretty much the standalone version of Citra does everything the Lib Retro Core does, and it does it better, with one exception that I've noticed. And that is, I like to play with uh, an Xbox controller. And I like to use the right analog stick to control the pointer on the touch screen when I have the, uh, especially if I'm playing a 3DS game emulated and I have both screens up at once. Uh, I like to do that and use the right analog to control the, the touch screen and the pointer on the touch screen. The problem with the standalone version is, to my knowledge, there's no way, or at least no simple way, to lock the pointer to the touch screen, meaning, you can move it way out of the touch screen so it's nowhere near it when you need it to be. Uh, whereas the Lib Retro Core locks it to that touch screen area. So it will never escape the, the area where it needs to be. And this isn't really a problem for a lot of 3DS games, but there are some that really require a, just a lot of quick inputs on the touchpad. And for those games, I just prefer even if it's at a performance hit, I prefer to use the LibRetro Core. So I'm going to start this out by saying, anytime you're doing customizations on a system like Botticera, uh, unless you're just not concerned and are ready to reinstall, re-image from scratch, go ahead and make sure you've at least backed up your user data folder and have it somewhere else, somewhere external to the system that's safe that you can just copy back over if you need to. Uh, for me, I tend to back up the user data folder with the exception of the ROMs directory. I leave that out because all my ROMs are already stored on my NAS, and if I need to, I can access them there. Uh, but anyway, just make sure you back up before you do anything, because you will invariably make a mistake and cause a catastrophic failure. I've done it. Everybody's done it. We, we all have those days. So with the importance of backups out of the way, let's dive into it. So right now I'm SSH'd into my Botticera system because I want to show you what I've had to put in place here. So the first thing is that a file is missing from here that you'll need to download and place here. And that file is in the user lib libretro directory. And it's this citra underscore libretro.so file. So when you install Botticera 39, this isn't going to be here. You need to place this here. And I'll show you a little bit later on where you can find this because I have found uh, versions of it which just do not work. Uh, but this particular version does work, and I'll show you where you can get it uh, a little bit later on in the video. 
So step one is placing this file in the directory user lib lib retro. Once that's there, we also need to move over to the Etsy emulation station directory and we need to modify a file here. You can use whichever text editor you're more comfortable with. And the file we're going to edit is es underscore systems dot cfg. And in here, we're going to look for the 3DS section. So you'll identify that by this platform 3DS and theme 3DS. And we'll, what you'll see is an entry here uh, with the emulator name of Citra. And there'll be some more info. Starting right here is where we're going to put in something new. And I've already done it here. You won't see this uh, on your Botasera 39 ES systems config file, but from where the line I have this uh, pointer on now, where it says emulator name equals lib retro, you'll want to add that and all of the lines down here to where it closes out this emulator tag. Uh, feel free to pause the video here if you need uh, to see this a little bit longer. But once you've added that in, just be sure to save the file and you can quit out of it. Now, because we've modified files that exist outside of the user data folder, we don't want to lose those changes when we reboot our Botasera system. So what we're going to do is we're going to run Botasera save overlay and it'll take a moment i'd already done this so i don't think i really had that much that was actually changed uh, but anyway now that we've done that these files the file we put in place and the changes to the es systems config should now uh, remain permanent across reboots okay so i was going to show you where uh, you can find that file so what we can do is head over to the Internet Archive. And I'm just going to search for Botocera V39 Citra Lib Retro. And you'll see this Botocera V39 Citra Lib Retro core. And this is what you will want to uh, access and download. Okay, so once you've made all the changes over on our Botticera system, we're gonna go into Nintendo 3DS and you'll notice you may need to uh, hit start and do a game settings update games list first. I'll just go ahead and do that. But now when you go into advanced system options, you'll see that there's Citra and there's Lib Retro Citra. So if we leave it set on Citra, we'll get the default behavior of launching with the Citra standalone. And then we can go back into advanced system options and we can set it to lib retro Citra. And there's a number of other options you can adjust uh, to whatever you prefer. Uh, for example, maybe I'll set graphics API to be Vulkan. But with it set to the emulator as LibRetro Citra, when we launch our game, it should launch with that new core we just added. And you can see here, it certainly does. And just to show that we are in the Lib Retro core, we'll even go down to information. And we are using the 3DS Citra core. Here's the version that we're using. And that's the same version that I showed you how to access on the Internet Archive. So I'm going to go ahead and exit this. 
And that is how you would get access to the LibRetro CitraCore on Boss Era version 39. Uh, I hope you found this useful. If you did, go ahead and give this video a like. Be sure to subscribe, and I will see you next time.